Overpronounced in this space might impress you in the short term, but could limit your enjoyment hours at louder volumes. This is one of those amps that seem to need about six different reviews to cover each of the sound profiles it's capable of producing. The Galleon TS120SE also really surprised me in that the sound profiles I expected to enjoy the most were actually the ones that I used the least. The Galleon TS120SE, if you're unaware, is a creation of the YouTuber Thomas Tan, YouTube channel Thomas and Stereo. I wanted to bring this up straight away so that I mention this, that yes, we are both YouTubers, but I have no secret handshake with Thomas or anything of the sort. Our only communications were shipping and receiving the amp to this point, so all thoughts and opinions are of my own. What we have in front of us today is the TS120 Special Edition version. It comes in at 4,495, everything included, tax and shipping. The standard edition comes in at 34.95. I won't be able to offer my personal opinion or comparative thoughts on the standard edition versus the special edition, but according to Thomas, the standard edition will have a slightly warmer sound with punchier bass, while the special edition is more of a neutral sound character. This thing is actually a brute of an amplifier, weighing in at 65 pounds. The vast majority of that weight in the rear from the transformers. Checking out the rest of the amp, we have some nice clunky knobs and dials. And when I say clunky, I mean that in a good way. They feel like they have substantial weight to them, and they give you some good feedback when you're changing between the different sound modes and other options. The actual look of the unit is very nice. Nearly all black with a mixture of materials. Pictured here are the KT-88Z tubes, which is an optional upgrade when purchasing this unit. As I started filming this one today, it started raining, of course. So if you hear some taps here and there, it's likely just the rain. Also, I have a bird screaming outside my window, so he's not being very considerate at the moment. If you could, during this brief intermission, please give me a like and subscribe. It really helps out a small channel like this, helps get my videos out there, and helps me get in new products to review. All right, let's get back to it. This is where things start to get interesting. You have two selectable modes of operation, Class A and Class AB. The power of course differs between these, with Class A producing 30 watts RMS per channel and 75 watts max, and 50 and 100 for Class AB. If you're unaware, basically Class A is regarded as the pinnacle of amplification amongst purists, but it also comes with some major drawbacks. For one, Class A amps are not and will never be efficient. And I'm talking 15 to 35% efficiency in comparison to something like 50 to 70 in AB and around 90% in class D. The byproduct of all this inefficiency is heat and in some cases a lot of it. There's a reason we rarely see high powered class A amps when you consider it may take more than 800 to 1500 watts of pure heat to generate 300 watts of audio. It's a tall ask, so no crossover distortion as the amp is conducting all out at all times. No switching between on and off, affecting the signal flow and increasing distortion, but you also might melt an ice cap or two. AB is the compromise, it's much more efficient, it's inexpensive to operate, and most, but not all of the crossover distortion can be removed. Class D is an entirely different topic with a lot of advancements in the past few years, but A and AB will be the two relevant for today's review. One byproduct of having to select between Class A and Class AB on a tube amp is that it will require biasing the tubes. Thankfully, it's actually about as simple as a process as you could imagine, and Thomas includes sort of a quick guide to get you up and running. He actually did a great job here. It's a simple task, but the last thing you want to do after unboxing this is peer through some long manual. And this simple guide basically covers it all. You can actually accomplish the biasing in one of two ways, either at the unit itself or with this home defense device. I mean, brick. I mean, remote. The remote that comes with this amp is, let's just say, substantial. I do appreciate the added effort instead of just including the typical credit card remote, but this little remote weighs as much as many of the little Class D amps that I get in. Anyways, to bias the tubes, you need to press Change, and then Class to select between Class A and Class AB. After that, you select Bias, and you'll see four red LEDs. In a short matter of time, they'll start to change from red to blue. When the LED above the bias button turns off, you're biased and you're good to go. It's unlikely you'll need to change back and forth that often after you find your preferences, but in all reality, this only takes about a minute to complete the task. It's also really nice that all this can be accomplished from your remote, makes a being the sound profiles a little more simple if you're not having to repeatedly get up to change between them. While we're getting a good look at the lights on the front of this, I just wanna mention that is one of my few notables with this amp. I do wish there was either a dimmer for the LEDs or even just an option to turn them off. 
I don't know about anyone else out there, but I have an astigmatism in both eyes and these can definitely trigger the halo effect in a really dark room. So it's not a knock on the sound or anything of the sorts, but instead a livability critique. This might be where that remote comes back into play. Someone breaks in at night, you blind them with the front of the amplifier, then you take them out with your home defense remote. Maybe I'll just leave that thought be. Now getting into the sound, I circle back to what surprised me about this amp. I was coming into this thinking or expecting the Class A to have a warm flowing type sound, a bit of a looser feel, the typical tube amp vintage sound that you might expect. But instead, I actually found the Class A sound to be much more refined and detailed than the Class A B. To be honest with you, I likely operated in Class A mode for 80% of the review. I just tended to enjoy that profile more. The Class A B is still good, mind you, but it came across a little smoother. I would call it more of a relaxed listen, which by all accounts is generally what I prefer, so the Class A really threw me for a loop on this one. To go a step further, maybe you've figured out which class you plan to use, and now jumps in three more variables. The sound modes, A, B, and T. The simple one to explain is T. All that one really does is enable the tone controls. Nothing too much to remark here. The tone control adjustments are exactly what I like to see, small and incremental. No huge swings one way or the other. And when you enable A or B, you disable the tone controls. I would say it could be argued either way for me between modes A and B. I would say I generally use mode A the most. It's a very accurate sound and mode B seems to relax the sound a little bit giving you a little more of an easy listen. All that's really going on here is feedback is being applied through the circuit differently. It's very noticeable and may depend greatly on your particular speaker pairing. Breaking down the bass, mids, and treble a bit further, one thing I didn't mention yet was I feel like Thomas might be a bit of a secret bass head. He voiced it and I can honestly tell you this amp pulls the bass right out. It's not a bloated, weighty feeling bass at all, but instead a very articulate and defined sound. I didn't bring a sub into the mix until late into my reviewing process with this one as I rarely felt I needed it, but I definitely did appreciate the additional sub outputs as well. When I had this paired with the Buchart S400 Mark IIs, it really highlighted their ability to put out more bass and extension than you would think is really possible on a speaker of this size. The KLH Model 5s really enjoyed the pairing as well, Lots of detail and tactile bass that can really bring in that next level you're looking for. The mid-range has a great timber, a very realistic sound that was reflected through clean vocals and instrumentation. No qualms with imaging or separation. Both were fully sufficient. I didn't note any misses here. It presents in a way that you could listen to the sound for hours without any nagging feeling of fatigue. All the modes seem to have a great mid-range, especially class A mode for myself. As mid-range is basically the voice of the speaker, it needs to be such a delicate process to flow into both the lows and the highs without having any areas stick out. Overpronounced in this space might impress you in the short term, but could limit your enjoyment hours at louder volumes. I think this one really fits the bill. The treble felt a little more pronounced than the mid-range, but it still blended well, and it's likely that slight V-shaped EQ coming into play here. It's a really engaging sound, and one benefit of an EQ like this is low-level listening. Oftentimes, if something comes across dead flat, it can be really challenging to get that shine and detail that you're looking for at low volumes. Sometimes the dynamics seem to be a little bit dull unless you really turn the volume up. Some amps today offer a loudness control for this or an optional boost for low level listening, but I actually felt the TS120 SE did a great job without any of the extras. Some notables with this one. Yes, the amp carries the same designer as the Doge amps, but no, it's not the same exact amp rebranded nor will it be the same exact sound. Thomas has noted that the TS120 is around 20% less bright than the Doge 10 MK3, and the TS120 SE also has a fuller and smoother mid-bass body in comparison to the leaner sound profile of the MK2. I'm not really a big fan of naming an exact percentage like this. How accurate these numbers are, I won't be able to comment on that, nor am I really sure how you could precisely say it, but nonetheless, it gives us an idea on the different design goals between these, or at least the design changes he was looking to implement to differentiate it from the Doge 10. The Doge 10 is a very popular amp as well, and it's obvious they share a lot of parts between them. But as for tagging it as a clone with a new label, it's not really accurate. For one, a very obvious one would be that this has an additional transformer. Also, I don't believe you can even purchase a Doge 10 amp at this point in 2023. So the TS120 Standard Edition is your likely move if you're interested. It should offer everything and more. Will it cost you a little more? Yes. But if you're comparing the Standard Edition price, everything included to your door, 
it's not as big of a price jump as you might think after you consider things like import fees, which can be as high as 25%. So this amp actually has home theater bypass. It was a bit of a surprising addition for me. I'm a big fan of home theater bypass on integrated amps to get the most out of your system, especially if you live in a shared space between music and movies. But I guess it just caught me a bit off guard having a tube amp with it. I kind of doubt it'll be used too heavily myself. I picture an amp like this used more in a dedicated space, but why not? Throw it in there. If anything, it separates itself from others on the market that don't have it. As much of a bass monster as this amp is, Thomas says that he actually turned it down from the original design. Thomas states that the beta version actually had deeper, stronger, and faster bass when he voiced it, but he toned it down around 10% to get the mid-range that he desired. He noted that at audio shows, it can be very impressive to have crazy bass, but when someone sits down at their home and wants long-term enjoyment, the mid-range is key. And yeah, I do agree with that. Will power coming in at 30 and 50 RMS be a problem? Not in my experience, really even a little bit. The power coming from this amp at no point felt like it held back the speakers from fully performing. It must have some of that 70s receiver magic pixie dust in it because these watts held their own in every way. There is an optional tube cage available that won't do much to stop a prying hand from reaching into this furnace, but it will protect the tubes and possibly keep your cat off of it. And most importantly, keep your tubes from running off when you're not paying attention. I hate it when that happens. What didn't I care for on this one? It has a one year warranty, and I felt like that's a bit light in my opinion. Three years seem to be a little more consistent with this price range. I can say when you reach out to the support email on the site, you will be speaking to Thomas, so it's not like you're entering into a ticket queue within a larger company who doesn't really have a full grasp on their products. I would fully expect top-notch service as it comes directly from the top down. I mean, Thomas actually did quit his job to pursue this venture, so, his product success, I would imagine, would be a top priority for him. I would have just liked to have seen three years, I think. The lights on the front are a bit too much for me. They're bright, and there's a lot of them. I don't mind the color or anything like that, but if I could just dim them or have the option to turn them off, that would be perfect. I think I would actually prefer a blend of the two, with the lights only becoming active when you make a change, and then automatically dim or turn off after a brief time. I really enjoyed my time with this amp, and it's another I'm not looking forward to creating up and sending back down the road. It was an interesting experience with Class A, with so many of the products I review today being Class D, it's nice to switch things up and bring something in like this that's new, that can both surprise and impress me with its performance. So to answer the question, if the standard model or the special edition is for you, it's hard to say. I didn't have both in to compare, but a safe bet based on his description would be a warmer sound on the standard edition and more analytical on the special edition. I typically lean to the warmness, but really enjoyed the special edition. So I'll have to leave that question open-ended. I would really appreciate it if you could help out with a like and subscribe. It really makes a huge difference to a smaller channel as far as pushing the videos out to more people, as well as getting in more products for review. Take care and I'll talk to you soon. See ya.